This book is called Going Someplace Special by Patricia McKenzie and Jerry Pickney. Trish Ann was about to burst with excitement. Crossing her fingers and clo closing her eyes, she blurted out a question. Grandma Frances, may I go to someplace special by myself? Please, pretty please, I know where to get off the bus and what street to take and all that. Trish always called it a special, someplace special, because it was her favorite spot in the world. Please, may I go? Pretty please with marshmallows on top. Grandma Frances answered, I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready to turn you loose in the world. I'm ready, the girl said, taking a giant leap across the floor. See what a big step I can make? Grandma Frances chuckled, all the time studying her granddaughter's face. I trust you'll be particular and remember everything I've told you. I will, I will, Trish Ann said, real confident like. You best hurry along before I change my mind, said Grandma. Trish Ann blew her grandmother a thank you kiss and she rushed out the door and down the sidewalk. At the corner, a green and white bus came to a jerking stop and hissed when the doors folded back. Trish Ann bounded up the steps and as she entered the bus, she noticed a sign, colored section. Trish Ann had seen such signs all her life. She recalled the first time Grandma Frances had taken this bus ride. Her grandmother told her, those signs can tell us where to sit, but they can't tell us what to think. I'm going to think about someplace special, Trish Ann said to herself and turned to look out the window. Stop by stop, the bus began to fill. At the farmer's market, people crowded on, carrying bags of fruits and vegetables. Miss Grinnell, Grandma's friend, climbed on the bus. As she inched her way towards the back, Trish Ann noticed that there were no seats left behind the Jim Crow sign that said colored section. So she stood up and gave Miss Grinnell her seat. It's not fair, she said, glaring at the empty seats up front. No, but that's the way it is, honey, said Miss Grinnell. I don't understand why, she began. But by now, the bus had reached Trish Ann's stop in front of Capitol Square in the heart of downtown. The door swung open and Trish hurried off. Trish Ann staggered on wobbly legs to a nearby bench. Instantly, Trish noticed on the bench was a sign that said, for whites only. Her face fell and she wished for Grandma Frances' strong hands to hold. Silly sign, she muttered as she stuttered away. At the edge of the square, she greeted a friend, Jimmy Lee, a street vendor. What's got your face all clouded up like a stormy day, he asked as he handed Trish Ann a free pretzel. Jim Crow makes me so mad, she said. Jimmy Lee pointed to a sign in Monroe's restaurant window. He said, my brother cooks all the food they serve, but do you think we can sit at one of their tables and have a BLT and a cup of coffee together? Then with a chuckle, he whispered, not that I want to eat anything my brother Jesse cooks. That man can't even scald water. The light changed, and Trish Ann carefully started across the street. Don't let those signs steal your joy, Jimmy Lee called after her. Trish Ann continued down Ninth Avenue. At the second light, the Sutherland Hotel rose up in front of her. Mr. John Willis, the hotel doorman, saw her. I believe an angel done slipped away from heaven, he said, smiling. Trish Ann managed to smile back. Mr. John Willis always said something nice. Trish Ann responded, no, sir, it's just me. Your mouth is smiling, but your eyes ain't, said Mr. Mr. Willis. So Trish left and continued along the street. 
Trish Ann ran straight into the Mission Church ruins where Mama, Grandma Frances often stopped to rest. There, in the protection of the walled garden, the girl left the tears, let her tears come. Getting to someplace special isn't worth it, she sobbed. I'm going home. She cried so hard, a lady in the garden said, My flowers have been watered already today. It was Blooming Mary, an elderly woman who took care of the garden. Blooming Mary is a kind and gentle soul, Grandma Frances would often tell Trish Ann. Trying to steady her tears and her voice, Trish Ann answered, No, ma'am, I'm just wishing my grandmother was here to help me get to someplace special. You can't get there by yourself? It's too hard. I need my grandmother. Blooming Mary nodded and thought on the matter. Then she said, I believe your granny is here, just as my granny is here with me as I speak. Listen close. Tell me what you hear. As Trish Ann listened closer, she began to hear grandmother's steady voice. You are somebody, a human being, no, ma no better, no worse than anyone else in the world. Getting someplace special is not an easy route, but don't study on quitting. Just keep walking straight ahead and you will make it. Those words were very comforting to Trish Ann, so she didn't feel alone anymore. She wiped her eyes and straightened her hat, and she started on her journey. At the corner, Trish Ann saw a building rising above all that surrounded it. Looking proud in the summer sun, it was much more than bricks and stone. It was an idea. Grandma Frances called it a doorway to freedom. When she looked at it, she didn't feel angry or hurt or embarrassed. At last, she whispered, I've made it to someplace special. Before bounding up the steps and through the front door, Trish Ann stopped to look up at the messes chiseled in the stone across the front facing. And the sign read, Public Library. All are welcome. That's the end of the story called going someplace special. Thank you.